inventions, bright colors, classic cars, the governor. We've got it all in this episode, including Tara Cox, who has some important information for parents of incoming kindergartners. Let's go inside Vancouver Public Schools. Everybody. Welcome to the show. I'm Nick Bull. We have a lot of good stuff coming up for you today and we're going to dive head first in just a minute, but let's do first our top three. These are our favorite social media posts for the week. Our number three comes from Tori Fellin, a teacher at Sacagawea Elementary. Her students got a lesson in calligraphy thanks to a guest artist, Gregory McNaughton. She says in her tweet that she hasn't heard her students this quiet and focused in a while, so I guess this lesson was a success. Number two comes from John Yaiko, a track and field coach at Skyview High School. Three-time Olympian and former Skyview athlete Kara Winger stopped by the Storm track and field practice recently to share her advice with students. Kara is a world-class javelin thrower and based on her many volunteer visits to Skyview over the years, a world-class person. What a cool experience for those kids. And our number one comes from Fort Vancouver head baseball coach Owen Frazier. The team just got a new sign commemorating its 1990 state championship. The old sign was in pretty bad shape, peeling off the press box wall. This new sign was donated by a Trappers fan. Looking good guys and good luck this season. Every generation has its innovators, its dreamers, its pioneers. A competition at Vancouver iTech Preparatory gives students the chance to stake their claim as a future leader. Students pitch their ideas for new products. Some dreams are small and practical, and others take us to outer space. A buzz fills the air in a crowded room on the WSU Vancouver campus. Today is the iPrize competition, an annual design and business plan contest for Vancouver iTech preparatory students. We put this competition together because it really gives students an opportunity to uh, think outside of just the classroom and think of the world and think of how they can actually make a change in the world. Each competitor came up with a product and a marketing plan. We set them up with mentors so they can understand what it would take to actually make an idea come to life. And that's where it's more than just having the idea, but actually making this idea turn into something. After months of research, design, and planning, they have just a few minutes to pitch it to judges from around the world of business and academia. Before the event, you feel worried, oh my, am I going to mess this up, am I going to forget midway, but after the event, it's just spectacular, I, the thrill of public speaking. Evan Gervell's plan is a system of satellites that can collect solar power and transport it back to Earth using microwaves. It's a big idea and perfect for a competition that reflects iTech's focus on technology and project-based learning. It pulls in um, what they're learning about in communications class with what they're learning about in design classes and art classes and puts all this together in a really um, authentic way. A humbler but infinitely more practical idea came from Brianna Sparks, an avid cross-stitcher. She designed a training tool for beginners that combines a phone app with a board that uses lasers to demonstrate the correct stitch. Our first place for iPrize 2018 goes to Brianna Sparks. In the end, Brianna's simple idea won the day and $250 to develop her product. I was just really surprised. I never thought that I would win even in first place. For these competitors, the ultimate prize is not a giant check, but the task of creation itself. I think it allows students to really show their innovative nature, I guess. I think that humans, I believe that humans are fundamentally curious, and so portraying that and really, uh, and bringing our ideas out there is, is a really fantastic opportunity to share what we have with the whole school. It may be a small idea, but if you develop it over time and um, work on it, you can maybe bring it out and show the world um, your invention. Evan, whom you saw in the video, finished in second place and won $150. In third place, Kaya Williams. Her product for iPrize might have been the simplest, but it's already in use in the real world. As Amanda Richter reports, it already has some big fans. When you're visually impaired, like these students at the Washington State School for the Blind, you don't paint the traditional way. 
In the past, students would make textured paint themselves using bark chips or other items. Today, they're using a special paint made just for them. It has um, also scents and it, the texture and scents can correspond to the color. So the purple has like little balls and it smells of lavender. The brown um, smells of coffee. Using touch and scent, they can create exactly what they see in their mind's eye. It's a relatively simple idea, but it's profound in the sense of um, why haven't we done this before? And this paint is a new product designed by freshman Kaya Williams, who goes to Vancouver iTech Preparatory. They can't really see the color, so I thought if I could feel the color on the inside, whether they could feel the color on the outside. Kaya is herself an artist, so the chance to share the joy of creation is meaningful. It makes me feel like really happy on the inside, knowing that I'm helping other people and giving other people the same adventures that I have and same experience that I have. And the other artists appreciate it. Amazing, I'm like, oh, somebody cares. <laughs> For any artist, visually impaired or not, painting is an outlet. Well, for me, art is definitely a very big distressor, and it like helps a lot. Like, just it's it's a very big outlet for my stress, and um, it it can just channel it out. And for me, like having the texture paint, it's like another window is open, so I can express even more. While her new friends express themselves, Kaya gets feedback on her product from potential customers and the chance to grow as a person. It's been very fun and very different from what I would usually end up doing because I'm not a very outgoing person, more of a shy, I don't like really talking to people, but here I feel like I can connect with them a lot more and I feel that they enjoyed their time and I enjoyed my time being with them. Inside Vancouver Public Schools, I'm Amanda Richter. Kaya continues plans to continue her development of the tactile paint product and also to pursue her goal of a gallery where visually impaired students' art can be shown and felt. Fruit Valley Elementary School got a recent visit from Governor Jay Inslee and a student there got a prestigious award, Washingtonian of the Day. Governor Inslee was in town to talk about the recent Breakfast After the Bell bill. In a Q&A with students, Inslee asked the question, what does the Incredible Hulk have for breakfast? Nine-year-old Anaya Andre replied, incredible things. Her clever response earned her the award from Governor Inslee. The bill requires schools in high poverty areas to provide a meal to students who arrive after the start of the school day. Oftentimes, children in that situation arrive to school hungry, which makes it difficult to learn. A group of young broadcasters got a glimpse into their futures thanks to a special field trip to the Moda Center. Students who volunteer for VPS Game Time, the district's sports broadcasting program, along with kids from Columbia River Sports Broadcasting Crew, got to go behind the scenes of a live broadcast of a Blazers game. About 20 students met with industry professionals to see how they put on broadcasts for television and the in-house feed at Moda Center. They toured control rooms, heard from directors, replay operators, engineers, graphics operators, and more. The students learned how their work at school is similar to professional work and how the pros do things differently. After the tour, everyone stuck around to see the Blazers beat the Memphis Grizzlies. A special thanks goes out to the good folks at Blazers Broadcasting and to the Foundation for Vancouver Public Schools, which helped pay for the tickets. Time now for a We Learn update, the latest in how technology is being used in our schools. This time around, it's actually parents getting their hands on technology at an advisory meeting for the district's Family Community Resource Centers. More than a dozen schools have FCRCs, which provide basic resources to kids. Once a month, parents from those schools get together to talk about the issues affecting their school communities. At a recent meeting, they were joined by the district's instructional technology facilitator team who let the parents get hands-on with the apps their kids are using in class. It's a big change from when mom and dad were kids. We had typing class. I had to explain to my son what a typewriter was and how that worked. So now it's kind of that flip side where he's learning all this new technology that's constantly coming in and he knows sometimes before I do. And he's six. <laughs> The typical response of a child is, what did you do in school today? Nothing. And this gives them some talking points to, to bring that dialogue, you know, at home. What did you do? I saw this today. Do you use this app? Um, and just get, you know, get excited and involved in what their kids are learning. Every middle schooler and high schooler in the district has their own tablet or laptop, as do older elementary students. The devices were paid for with a technology levy passed by voters several years ago. And if you want more stories about technology in action, check out the district YouTube page, youtube.com slash vansdtv. Just look for the We Learn playlist. 
Spring has sprung and if you're a gardener, now is your time. High school plant sales are about to begin. Several high schools, including Columbia River, Fort Vancouver, Hudson's Bay, and Vancouver Flex Academy have greenhouses and you can buy plants grown by students. That includes flowers, trees, veggies, hanging baskets, and a lot more. All of the proceeds benefit the future farmers of America and programs that benefit kids. Check out the district website for the schedule of sales. That's vanistyorg 2018 plant sales. If you're of a certain age, you probably remember shop class. Well, a new program at Hudson's Bay High School is bringing it back, but with a modern twist. To observe students in the Building Trades program at Hudson's Bay High School is to observe a classroom of students in deep focus. Uh, this class is Intro to Construction, so they get to go through and they have 10 days to um, kind of get a taste of 10 different parts of the construction field. Wire electrical units and draw blueprints and put drywall on. This is a new option at Bay, like a traditional shop class with an eye on career paths for students. The big part of high school now is kind of shifting back to just making sure you have a plan after high school. Option. And that, that, that plan doesn't have to be college, it could be going to an apprenticeship. That's possible through this program thanks to a partnership with the local carpenters union. Students can work their way towards eligibility for apprenticeships by the time they graduate. Industries are running out of, of qualified um, workers. The boomer generation is retiring, which means there's going to be a lot of openings in trade, but we don't have people to fill those jobs. Students can try out different areas of industry to see which they prefer and get a head start on their futures. Well, just like in general, it's good to know how to do certain things. So if you ever apply for a job, you'll have a one up on someone who doesn't know how to do those things. And students are discovering the joy of building something with their own two hands. Uh, I'm not always sitting down and having to read something. I can actually try it, and if I mess up, I can try it a different way. There's always pride in getting good grades, but the pride that you see when you've actually created something is something just great to see. The Building Trades program is part of the Bay Aces Magnet, which includes environmental sciences and other hands-on areas of study. And if your student is trying to figure out whether to apply for one of the district's many magnet programs, there is good news. The application deadline has been extended for several of them. That includes Bay Aces. Take a look at your screen. All of the programs there have been extended out to allow for as many students as possible to apply. That includes programs of choice at Bay, Fort, and Skyview. There are some different deadlines there, so take a close look, and if you want to apply or get more information, go to the district's website, vansd.org. It's not just high schoolers who need to start thinking about next school year. Joining us now to tell us more is Tara Cox from the district's communications office. Tara? Thanks, Nick. One of the most exciting times as a parent is when your child begins school. And for parents whose children will be five this fall, the time to register your little ones for kindergarten is now. Any child who reaches their fifth birthday on or before August 31st is eligible to enter kindergarten next fall. To register, head to your local elementary school with proof of your child's birthday, immunization records, and emergency contact information. If you're not sure which is your local school, the district's website can help. There's a boundary map on there that makes it easy to understand. Full day kindergarten is offered at all the VPS schools and the Mandarin and Spanish language learning and dual language programs are also accepting applications. And if your child is headed to kindergarten this fall, why not get them off to an early start? A free program this summer will get them prepared for the job of being a student. The Jumpstart program is offered at every VPS elementary. It starts a few weeks before the first day of school and covers some of the basics, like the alphabet and counting. But the most important thing is it teaches the kids how to be a student. You can sign up for the program at your local school. The program runs each day from 9 a.m. to 11.30, and it includes a snack, which is nice, of course, if you've ever had to deal with a hungry five-year-old. Kindergarten teachers tell us that students who complete the Jumpstart program have a much better start to their school year, and it builds a lot of confidence through the program. So make sure to check it out. Nick, back to you. Thanks, Tara. You know, there are a lot of ways to tell that spring has arrived. The birds sing, the flowers bloom, everything is green, and the greenest thing of all is the annual Patty Hauk Parade. Bailey Sims takes us to Main Street, where the 27th year of the parade thrilled those who watched and those who walked. In just a few minutes, the 27th annual Patty Hauk Parade will begin, and it all starts here at Patty Hauk Elementary School.
This year's Grand Marshal is teacher Melissa Cantwell and her co-Grand Marshal, Hawks service dog, Luna. And Luna's just our little mascot this year. So she's new to Hawk. This is her first parade. And um, she's pretty excited about that. <laughs> I have gone on a parade, but it's my first time being a drummer on a parade. Oh, how exciting. We like walk and like just this, and like we have to play our parts. We play. It's all Local car clubs, police and fire departments, businesses, and other organizations sign up to march down Main Street. All right, ladies, why do you like coming to the parade? Well, who doesn't want to be in a parade? That's true. That's very much true. How about yourself? Well, I'm a Texas bee who got lost, and so I just showed up for the parade, and I'm having a great time. Every class at Hauk has a theme, and as they march down Main Street, they present it to a panel of judges, who selects winners in a variety of categories. Show and ship school spirit, best educational theme, and best decorated class. This year we did kind of a reach for the stars kind of theme, and so all of the kids are taking it to this next level. It's pretty magical. They've got some really amazing stuff. Almost every year. We've every been almost year. Every it's a tradition. Year. Tradition? Wow. Well, what's your favorite part of the parade? I'm either going to say candy or watching all the cars. Tell me a little about the car. The car's 1947 Oldsmobile. This is the original color that the car would have been when it came from the factory. Wow. And I've got a new Chrysler, and I prefer to drive this car. <laughs> I, would, I don't blame you, honestly. <laughs> now, what makes you come back every year to the, the parade? Well, I went to school here way back in the old days. Uh, I, unfortunately, I didn't have a horse to ride to school. What's the most fun part about being in this parade? Seeing the reactions of the little kids to these old cars, because these, these cars weren't part of their generation like they were for the white guys, but these kids just, they, they want to look at them and sit in them and uh, talk about them, and they even come up and want, want to shake your hand because you have the car. I just find that just really intriguing. I'm just glad that they enjoy it, and I'm, I'm pleased and honored to be here. What's your favorite part of the parade? Fire truck. The fire truck was really cool. Why is that your favorite part of the parade? Because it's the leader. It's the leader? And it's really big, right? Did you get a lot of candy today? Yeah. After the parade wraps up, students head back to Hauk for an all-school assembly and ice cream party. It's just always really impressive that a school of our size, which is kind of a small school, can put on a whole big production for the community for St. Patrick's Day. I've got beads, bread, candy, and some new friends here at the Patty Hauk Parade on Main Street. Inside Vancouver Public Schools, I'm Bailey Sims. Thanks, Bailey. In the story, you saw Mina Milligan, one of the judges. She actually started the parade 27 years ago, and now that she's retired, this is actually her first opportunity to be a judge, so good for her. Time now for the big picture, our favorite image from social media, and this one is just awesome. The Northwest Association of Blind Athletes posted this photo on Instagram. The caption reads, best friends running, no expectations, no worries and pure freedom on an open track. The joy on those kids' faces is magical, and I hope you like this picture as much as I do. Let's take a look at what's happening across Vancouver Public Schools, and we have an important date on the calendar. On May 10th, the Foundation for Vancouver Public Schools has its annual luncheon at the Hilton Vancouver. It's the biggest fundraising event of the year, and the money goes right back into programs that benefit kids in our community. The food is prepared by the culinary arts students at Fort Vancouver High School. It's delicious, and you must register in advance for this event. So go to the foundationforvps.org to book your spot and to help out some great kids. That's it for us. I want to thank you for joining us. For Tara Cox, Bailey Sims, I'm Nick Vole. We will see you next time.